A fire on the west side destroys a home and leaves one person hurt. Our Katrina Weber has the latest. A, cue, a crash shuts down several lanes on the southwest side highway. The details that police are revealing about the investigation this noon. And a threat for some storms this afternoon and this evening. We've got the latest on the forecast coming up. Live from case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. And we start with some late breaking news this noon. Governor Greg Abbott has just issued a statement about the new school year. It says in part, quote, the authority to decide when the school year will begin lies with local school boards. They can choose dates in August, September or even later. But whenever the local school board chooses to open, the board must comply with the requirement to provide the necessary number of days and hours of instruction for students. The authority to decide how schools will safely open this year again lies with local school boards. It can be with students in schools. It can be through remote learning or a combination of the two. In making that decision, school boards have the ability to base their decisions on advice and recommendations by local public health authorities, but are not bound by those recommendations. The governor also says that if at any time during the school year a COVID-19 case is confirmed on a school campus, the school board has the ability to close the campus for up to five days to sanitize the campus. Schools that close under this scenario will continue to be funded for providing remote only instruction. And in the meantime, a destructive fire overnight has only added to the heartbreak for a West Side man. It destroyed his home and left his daughter with burns. That fire was in the 8800 block of Flint Valley, not far from Marbach Road in Hunt Lane. As Katrina Weber tells us, the homeowner already had a number of problems on his plate. Smoke billowing from this West Side home carried with it a family's memories. Firefighters worked to save what they could after getting the call just before 4 a.m. The fire started in a bedroom, front bedroom of the house. So we were able to get that pretty fairly quickly under control. As it turned out, the home in the 8800 block of Flint Valley wasn't the biggest concern. Firefighters were worried about people. A 32 year old woman in particular who accidentally had set herself on fire. Those are some of the details that we were getting is that part of her clothing was on fire and she actually did the stop, drop and roll and put that out. Still, they say she suffered burns on her upper body. We spoke to her father, who also was in the home and heard her blood curdling screams. He says his daughter told him she was trying to light a candle when something flared up at her. He and his three grandchildren, four, six and seven years old, got out safely. The owner of this house told us he had just recently lost his wife. Now he's lost his home and all his memories of her. His daughter's in the hospital and he's left to care for her three young children. He says this middle of the night fire couldn't have happened at a worse time. He's also out of work due to the coronavirus pandemic. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. At noon, a major crash on the southwest side sends two people to the hospital. Police say that at around 8 a.m., a driver in a white vehicle crossed over the median and went through a barrier and into oncoming traffic. This was on the southwest Loop 410 near I-35. Two people were taken to the hospital. Police at the scene were not sure what condition they were in. However, they tell us the person in the car was more seriously hurt than the person in the truck. It is not clear what caused that crash. Also new this noon, two teens killed in an early morning crash in shirts. Police say it happened at the intersection of Farm Road 3009 and Webster Drive around 1 this morning. Officers say a Jeep was traveling south on 3009 when a Nissan attempted to make a left turn onto the highway. The Nissan was then hit by the Jeep. The driver of the Nissan, 19-year-old Madison O'Neill, was pronounced dead at the scene. The passenger of the Nissan, 17-year-old Tana Rivera, died after she was rushed to the hospital. Police said that they that the driver of the Jeep was evaluated at the scene and allowed to leave. The cause of the crash is still under investigation. And the community coming together today to honor a former Judson High School football player who passed away from kidney cancer. A public viewing and funeral for 17 year old Bryce Wisdom being held today. The viewing was from 9 to 11 this morning at the Agape Christian Church in the 1400 block of Judson Road. It was open to the public. However, everyone was required to wear masks and only 10 people were allowed inside the church at all times. A private funeral took place right after the viewing. 
If you're looking to get tested for COVID-19 and you live in the Guadalupe County area, there is free testing today. It's happening at the Shirts Community Center from 8 in the morning until 4 in the afternoon. You do not need to schedule an appointment, but testing will end when the supplies run out. For the first time in nearly a month, the number of people in the hospital for coronavirus now under the 1,000 mark here in Bear County. However, the number of cases is still on the rise. 965 people are in the hospital. We now have 13% of staffed hospital beds available. There are also declines in those needing extra treatment. 380 people are in the intensive care unit and 250 are on ventilators. More than 1,300 cases were reported during the last update for a total of 40,253. And a reminder, the city has said test results continue to lag, so they are now giving a seven-day average. Right now, that number is 803. We have a grim new forecast from the CDC, which is now predicting that 182,000 Americans will be dead of COVID-19 by August 22nd. Very sad news indeed. Meanwhile, parents and teachers are working to try to figure out how to get back to school safely. ABC's Rita Roy has the latest. In Houston, Texas, some hospitals on the brink, doctors increasingly worried and frustrated. We're doing our best to save all these people. And then you get another batch of people that are doing exactly the opposite of what you are telling them not to do. It's having in every possible catastrophe that you can imagine. And by far, this is the worst. As COVID-19 patients like 67-year-old Riley Harrison battle the deadly virus there. You got a death wish play with COVID. Nationwide, new cases were down last week compared to the previous week for the first time since June. But in the past 24 hours, the U.S. has reported more than 69,000 new confirmed cases and more than 1,500 new deaths, bringing the national death toll to more than 151,000. Florida with a record number of fatalities three days in a row. Concern growing amongst parents and teachers coast to coast with the first day of school school quickly approaching. Books are all put away. This video going viral of fifth grade teacher Katie O'Connor showing a preview of her Colorado classroom prepped for COVID. What world is this? An elementary school classroom. This makes me really sad. Some in Hartford, Connecticut, even protesting demanding safe work conditions come fall. Our kids are supposed to start right after Labor Day and it's face to face and we think it's dangerous. Meantime, Chattooga County Schools in Georgia already opened Thursday with social distancing and extra sanitation methods, but no masks required. It's one of the first in the country back in session. They've took her temperature twice today. They keep their desks pretty much uh, as far as part as, as possible. Though there are now nearly four and a half million confirmed cases here in the U.S. The seven day case average is declining in four major hotspots, Texas, Arizona, Florida and California. The mayor of Los Angeles saying this is a make or break week for them, urging everyone to stay vigilant because he says the virus preys when people let their guards down. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Back here at home, police say a man trying to take his own life ended up taking someone else's, and that man is now facing murder charges. Police say around 6.30 last night, 26-year-old Kobe Burke was driving on Babcock Road. He told police he intentionally drove into another vehicle so he could kill himself. That vehicle then caught on fire. A 19-year-old woman inside was killed, and two other people had to be taken to the hospital. Police tell us Burke tried to run away from the scene, but he was arrested a short time later. Right now, we're still waiting to learn the name of the woman killed in that crash. This noon, police are still trying to find the person or persons responsible for killing a 17 year old on the north side. It happened around 430 this morning, a shooting in the 7600 block of McCullough Avenue near Oblate Drive. Police tell us the teen called some friends to come over. He went outside and there were three people, one person pulling out a gun and shooting the teen. The three suspects ran off. The victim pronounced dead at the scene. Investigators are still trying to figure out what led to that shooting. 
New details in a stabbing investigation this noon. San Antonio police tell us a woman and her boyfriend were arguing in a motel room in the 5700 block of Industry Park Drive just before 1230 this morning. The woman says one of her family members walked by the room and heard the argument, so they confronted the boyfriend. The suspect and the victim got into a fight, and that's when police say the suspect stabbed the victim multiple times. The victim died at the scene. At last check, police were still looking for the suspect. From discounts on school supplies to a free car wash, how would educators can cash in on some deals before the next school year begins? We have details ahead. The anticipation has been incredible, but it is finally here. One more preview before the Spurs tip off the summer version of the season. Coming up in sports. And teachers are worried about how they're going to make sure that the students get a good education during the pandemic. And that's why a group of them all got together for an online group that's called Quarantich San Antonio. The creator of this online group told our Alicia Barrera that their purpose is to make sure that teachers have everything they need to get students ready for the new school year. The end of the 2019-2020 school year definitely proved to be stressful for parents who had to work from home, but also play teacher's aid. That way they can make sure that their student was really learning. But this go around, teachers and parents want to make sure that it goes way smoother, which is how quarantine comes into the picture. So what exactly is Quarantich? It's an online community open to all on Facebook, and their parents and educators toss around ideas to help navigate online school, homeschool and everything in between. Through the group, parents can hire private certified instructors or just simply be able to relate to others and know that they're not alone. This original quarantine was started in Houston, but here in San Antonio, a former NEISD teacher and mom of three, Kendall Aljabori, created the group. And it was about a month ago, and already there are close to 1,200 educators and parents ready to work together to make it a successful school year. According to the rules of this Facebook group, it's a politics-free zone simply to ask questions and share advice on how to succeed educationally during quarantine. And some of the top questions and topics that you can find there include hiring a teacher that can come to the student's home. Teachers are also offering after school tutoring and some again simply finding that there are others in the same exact situation. I think that if you join Quarantine San Antonio that you post your story. How many kids do you have? What grades? any concerns you have um, because people are answering and giving really heartfelt advice and it's just I think helping a lot of people get more confidence for this upcoming school year. And parents and teachers in case you're wondering what are some school supplies that could really help students during quarantine. A popular one that worked for parents in the group is a whiteboard or post-it notes. And Kendall says that any parent or educator are welcome to join the group and ask questions and again share this advice. For a link to that Facebook group, you can head over to ksat.com. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Outside with live cam, only 86 degrees. That's nice, but we do need a flip-flop. And I'm not talking about the kind you wear on the beach or out. Right. I'm just talking about like between the aquifer and like mold. Can we reverse yeah. those, please? Bring mold down, bring the aquifer up. Go. I like that idea. We may get a chance to do that, at least as far as the aquifer is concerned this afternoon. There are some rain chances in the forecast with thunderstorms. In fact, the aquifer is down today about half a foot, 655.9. That all important 10 day average at 655.4. In your pollen count, mold up a little bit today, 3,880. Uh, 3, it's in the high category. We'll talk about those chances for storms and how long it's going to stick around. Coming up. Well, today's a big day. Today you can celebrate National Avocado Day with free guacamole, plus grab a free taco, minimal effort needed. And there's discounts for teachers ahead of the upcoming school year. Myra Arthur has those deals and more. Today is National Avocado Day, and what better way to celebrate than with some free guac? 
Chipotle is offering the freebie today. There is a catch here. The deal is only for people who have already signed up for Chipotle's rewards program. Taco Bell is testing out its new rewards program. And if you're groaning about downloading another app, the chain is hoping to entice you with some free food. You can get a free Doritos Locos taco just for signing up. If you keep using the app, you can earn rewards and unlock discounts. Starting Sunday, the Wash Tub is offering free car washes for all school faculty members. To get the free car wash, faculty needs to present a valid employee ID. Here's another one for teachers, HEB, offering teachers a 15% discount on select school supplies. Teachers can save up to 50 bucks. All teachers have to do is register online at HEB.com slash teachers. And make sure you do that before 11.59 p.m. on August 27th. The discount is valid through September 1st. And it's National Culinary Arts Month. If you want to get the kiddos in the kitchen to learn about healthy eating, check out the free recipes on chefessay.org. Under the Shelf at Home section, you can find recipes for meals like apple nachos or picadillo tacos. Myra Arthur, KSAT 12 News. All right, Justin Horn, normally I'm in the studio, and when you wear that particular tie, you know what I say. <laughs> Every time. Oh, nice man. LSU purple. Yeah. We're uh, almost ready I, to I get... I couldn't pass up the opportunity. Well, I knew you wouldn't. Uh, yeah, we're almost ready to get SEC football back in play here, it sounds like. So. Uh, we're also... Got to get our bet going. That's right. We're also ready to start talking about some rain chances here. We'll keep our fingers crossed this afternoon. There are some chances. Let's take a look at the big picture here and show you what's going on. Uh, upper level winds showing that uh, we have a ridge pipe pressure off to the west. And then a little disturbance moving through parts of Arkansas. But we have what's called northwesterly flow working uh, into Texas. And this typically is a pretty good flow for us. It makes forecasts a little bit tricky because we can get these little disturbances that develop up across North Texas and work all the way down into uh, San Antonio and South Texas. It can also help to push fronts through. And that's what we're dealing with today. We do actually have a frontal boundary to speak of, which is pretty rare for July and August, but uh, that is what's going on. This is a very weak front. It's not going to cool us down, but it could kick up some showers and storms today. There is a marginal risk of severe weather anywhere you see this green color, and this is very low end. Uh, on a scale of one to five, this is a one, and I think the main threat if we're going to see any severe weather today is going to be some gusty winds, and that'll be later this evening. Visible satellite picture tells us the story nicely here because we can pick out where that front is right there. We've got some showers and storms right along it, uh, north of Austin along I-35. This is north of Fredericksburg. And typically, during the afternoon, these front fronts tend to slow down a little bit. Uh, so it'll probably slowly ease into the hill country this afternoon. That'll be the first place we'll watch for some storms. And then eventually this evening and tonight, uh, San Antonio could get in on some of that action. So here's a look at the future cast. And uh, we'll go forward in time here, 5 o'clock, show some thunderstorms there around Kerrville. Does even show a little bit of activity down to the south and west. We'll see if that unfolds. Uh, but as we go forward in time towards, say, 10 o'clock, maybe a little bit more coverage right along this dying front. Uh, we could see some thunderstorms there. And again, a few of them could be stronger. And then uh, even as we go into the overnight period and early tomorrow morning, we still could see some clusters of storms developing. Now, we're not looking for a lot of heavy rain out of this, but if we do get a cluster of some of these storms, it could put down a decent amount, could cause some quick minor flooding. So we'll watch out for that as well. Uh, tomorrow afternoon with this front still around, it's falling apart, but it's still sort of there. Uh, we'll get some more slight chances of rain Saturday. We'll have to watch Sunday and Monday too for any disturbances that develop off to our north and west. We mentioned the main threat is basically wind here, flooding, hail, tornado. Those threats are low. Here's what the forecast looks like. 97, 5 o'clock will call for a 30% chance of rain, 30% chance 7 o'clock through 10 o'clock as well. And we'll keep that going all the way through tomorrow morning. Outside, we've had a good morning cloud deck. Uh, we're starting to see that break up a little bit. 86 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 72. Feels like 92 at this hour. And uh, we'll see those heat index values get pretty close to 100. You can see some of those clouds that held on for quite a while. They are now starting to break up. So we'll go partly cloudy here over the next couple of hours. 91 already in Pleasanton where we've seen more sun, 87 in Seguin, 91 Gonzales, 91 right now in Kennedy. And the heat index is above 100 in Pleasanton, feels like 101 there, closing in on 100 in Gonzales. And uh, we should see those heat index values. That's the 
the number there in yellow. That number should uh, jump above 100 in, for most places later this afternoon. Very quickly, we've got to talk about the tropics. We have Isaias moving off to the north and west. Pretty healthy looking storm at this point. Uh, you can see where uh, we have sort of the center of circulation there. Uh, moving towards the Bahamas near the Turks and Caicos right now. Winds are at 75 miles per hour, uh, Category 1 hurricane, and then it's going to move up the east coast, probably as a Category 1 storm. Uh, winds 75 miles per hour, maybe 65 miles per hour as it gets toward the nation's capital. It works up into uh, New England, so this is going to cause problems up and down the east coast. If you have travel plans out that way, definitely something you want to keep in mind. A lot of rain probably. 30% chance of rain, 97 today. We'll keep that chance of rain going, sort of blanketed tonight all the way through tomorrow. 98 on your Saturday, 99 on Sunday, 20% chance of rain. And another slight chance on Monday. Otherwise, ridge builds in and it gets hot, 101 by Wednesday. But we'll have an eye on the radar tonight. And tomorrow we'll keep you posted if anything develops. So we're cheering on the rain and we're cheering on the spurs tonight as they get ready to tip things off. Preview coming up. It is what the Spurs players, coaches, and fans have been waiting for, the restart of the season. It all tips off tonight when the Spurs take on the Sacramento Kings. There were actually two games last night, and with social justice on so many minds, we saw the Pelicans and Jazz players kneel during the National Anthem last night as a protest. Spurs guard Lonnie Walker IV has been promoted to the starting lineup for the Spurs. So yesterday he was asked if the Spurs have anything planned as a team tonight. Well, we're going to see what we have to do as a team. Um, we haven't really talked about it yet, but I'm pretty sure it will pop up. You know, we have Coach Pop, who's probably one of the most woke players, woke people in the league itself, you know. We want to message and be able to let things go. So um, it's for sure going to pop up. Each player will have the opportunity to wear messages on their uniforms rather than their names in the first four games. And veteran DeMar DeRozan was asked why he has chosen the message education reform for his jersey and explained why. Having an education reform of understanding what injustice, oppression, um, economic values, um, all these elements that we miss out growing up, coming, growing up in school that we don't get taught, you know. So for me, having that element um, being changed in, in putting that foundation into the kids and to the youth of helping them understand life as we just now figuring out at 30 years old will make our generation much, much more educated and better. All right, the first of eight, the run for the playoffs starts tonight against the Kings at 7 o'clock. Coming up through today at five, social distancing in a pandemic. It's important and most likely temporary, but for young children, making connections during this time is not only difficult, it can also be hard to understand how you as a parent can help. That's today at five after entertainment tonight. We'll be right back. Welcome back. With the pandemic surging in the United States and President Trump trailing in the polls, he's now suggesting that there be a delay in the election, something that's never been done before. Here's ABC's Andrew Dimbert from Washington. It's something no president has ever suggested until now, delaying a general election. President Trump tweeting, with universal mail-in voting, 2020 will be the most inaccurate and fraudulent election in history. It will be a great embarrassment to the USA. Delay the election until people can properly, securely, and safely vote. I don't want to see a crooked election. But top elections officials from dozens of states dispute the president's claim that mail-in voting will result in rampant fraud. Even officials from the Department of Homeland Security dispute the president's claim. That ability to audit, to conduct post-election audits is critical to, again, establishing the, the integrity of the election. The proposition to postpone November's election met with a wave of criticism from both sides of the aisle. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell on WKNY. Well, never in the history of the country, uh, through wars, uh, depressions, and the Civil War, have we ever not had a federally scheduled election on time? All this while millions desperately wait for Congress to pass another economic stimulus bill. The last of those $600 weekly checks for out-of-work Americans were processed last week. There's still no plan to replace them. 
And even if Congress reaches a deal, there will be a lapse in benefits. Here, uh, Senator Schumer said, and we feel the same way, it is our objective to try to reach an agreement that's good for the American people. The House passed a spending bill to extend aid nearly two months ago, but Senate Republicans moved more slowly, only scrambling to pass a deal this week. Democrats say that bill doesn't do enough and are blasting Republicans for not coming to the negotiation table sooner. So instead of engaging in this stunt to try and get the heat of America off their backs, they ought to do something real, which is sit down and seriously negotiate with Democrats about this issue. The financial fallout from the pandemic continues to hammer the U.S. economy, with second quarter GDP shrinking to just under 33 percent, the worst quarterly loss since 1958. And with no deal in place to extend those crucial financial lifelines for millions of Americans, congressional leaders plan to continue talks this weekend. Now, one point where Democrats and Republicans seem to agree is cutting another round of stimulus checks to American households. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington. Other stories making headlines this afternoon. The George W. Bush Presidential Center says it got hit by ransomware back in May. The hacker stole demographic and donation information. The center says the information was later destroyed because a ransom was paid. A data management services provider told the center that the social security numbers and payment cards information were encrypted and were not compromised. A number of organizations in the United Kingdom have said they were also affected by the attack. Meanwhile, Twitter says the hackers responsible for a recent high profile breach used the phone to fool a small group of Twitter employees into giving them access. The company says, quote, the attack relied on a significant and concerted effort to mislead certain employees and exploit human vulnerabilities to gain access to our internal systems, end quote. That attack happened on July 15th, and it compromised the accounts of some of the most high profile Twitter users. Two European drug makers are getting a joint 2.1 billion fund from the U.S. for an Operation Warp Speed coronavirus vaccine. Is the noise gone? The British and French pharmaceutical companies plan to start a phase three trial by the end of the year. Under this deal, the companies would produce up to 100 million doses of coronavirus vaccine next year with an option for 500 million more doses. The CDC warning that backyard chickens and ducklings are responsible for a serious Salmonella outbreak. The outbreak has sickened nearly 1,000 Americans, sending 150 to the hospital and killing one person. Backyard poultry, especially chickens, have become popular pets in the U.S., health experts say. Poultry can carry salmonella bacteria even if they look clean and show no signs of illness. The CDC says chicken and duck owners should always wash their hands carefully after handling the birds or their eggs. And pet ducks and chicks should never be allowed inside your home due to the risk of infection. What was Tropical Storm Isaias knocked out power and caused flooding across Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic yesterday? The National Guard had to rescue at least 35 people in the Puerto Rico area, including two newborns. Now, as the hurricane has moved into the Bahamas, it's headed toward the U.S. East Coast. Outside with live cam up to 87 degrees. We know that hurricane is going to go up that Florida East Coast dropping some rain. We would love to have a little front coming down from wherever it's coming down from. Just come down from wherever uh, and drop some rain on us, please. Yes, we needed something to sort of change up our pattern. And we got into a pattern where we are seeing a frontal battery, an actual frontal battery trying to work into our area this afternoon. So let's take a look at the radar. And uh, you can see where the storms are up there north of Georgetown, north of Round Rock. So this is still north of Austin, but it's right along that boundary where we are getting some development this afternoon. And I think we'll continue to go a little bit more as we go throughout the course of the day. If you're watching us from San Antonio, it's probably going to take until this evening before we see some activity on the radar around here. And I should reiterate that not everybody's going to get rain out of this, but at least it's more promising than we've seen uh, over the last couple of systems. And here's a look at the severe, severe weather risk today. The highest risk is going to be across parts of Louisiana, Mississippi, and then parts of New Mexico. But we are underneath a marginal risk for severe weather, so we could see some gusty winds with any of the storms that develop. Meantime, the uh, morning cloud cover has been slow to erode today, but it's finally starting to 
uh, break down a little bit. We're at 87 degrees at the airport and starting to see sun there. 92 in Comfort, 91 Curvo, 91 in Pleasanton. It's hot. It'll be humid too. Heat index values up over 100. We'll call for a 30% chance of rain this late this afternoon and this evening. And a couple of those storms could be on the strong side. We'll have more on that forecast here in just a few minutes. Guys. Look forward to that. Thank you, Justin. Car shopping can be stressful, and it's even worse when parents are helping new drivers find their first car. So what should you look for? Studies show teens are among the riskiest drivers, but often they're driving cars that may not provide enough protection in a crash or include the most important safety features. Consumer Reports and the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety have come up with a list of 65 used vehicles perfect for first-time drivers. The two organizations looked at performance, reliability, and crash test data. When choosing a vehicle for a young driver, it can be a struggle to find one that gives them very good crash protection with one that can help them avoid the crash in the first place. By combining with the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety to create this list, we've given a group of vehicles that check both of those boxes. That Consumer Reports says all of the cars on the list are under $20,000. Five of them are under $6,000. Those are the Mazda 3, Honda Civic Sedan, Subaru Legacy, Lincoln MKZ, and the Hyundai Tucson, ranging in model years from 2011 to 2015. For the full list of cars that made the list, head online to cr.org slash teen cars. If you're holding out to get your hands on the latest iPhone, you're going to have to wait. We're going to tell you why coming up next. And we've heard from health experts, school administrators, parents and teachers about their concerns for the upcoming school. Now hear what students have to say in extended interviews. Details coming up. daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. Impossible Foods will now be available at Walmart. The faux meat company announcing that its plant-based burgers will now be sold at Walmarts across the country. The most significant rollout of its products so far. The Impossible Burgers will be available at 2,000 Walmart locations nationwide. And as we all know, it's been a tough year for many retailers, so Dick's Sporting Goods is stepping up and extending premium pay for employees through the end of the year. Dick says that pay boost is 15% above ordinary wages. The company also announcing that it would follow a growing trend and close all stores on Thanksgiving. In previous years, it was open limited hours on the holiday. Dick's furloughed a significant number of its roughly 40,000 employees earlier this year. And move over White Claw, Topo Chico is jumping into the hard seltzer wars. Coca-Cola moving into the boozy beverage market with an alcoholic version of its mineral water, Topo Chico. The beverage giant saying it will offer Topo Chico hard seltzer in select cities in Latin America later this year and in the U.S. in 2021. Coke citing Topo Chico's popularity in cocktails and mixed drinks as a reason behind the move. And that's your Cheddar Business and Tech Update. I'm Nora Ali from New York City. We've got a little bit more consumer news for you. If you've been waiting to get your hands on the latest iPhone, well, you're just going to have to wait a little bit longer. According to Apple, uh, last year's new iPhones, they started selling late in September, but this time it's not going to work out that way. The latest iPhones are going to be shipped slightly later than usual, and it's all due to a disruption in global supply chains. Thanks, yes, to coronavirus. The company posted their third quarter earnings amid the pandemic. It shows a revenue of nearly nearly $60 billion in the three months ending in June. All right, outside with live cam, that temperature is slowly creeping up and that rain is slowly creeping down, we hope. Yeah, it's trying to. Yeah. Uh, there's a broken line right now of some showers and storms out there, but it's still far to our north. So far today, 87 degrees, the high temperature, 79 the low this morning. Didn't cool down much at all. Averages are 96 and 75. Chances are will be above average to finish out the month of July, which by the way, is probably gonna go in the record books as one of the hottest Julys we've seen since records have been kept. It was a warm one. Uh, the record high for today is 103. That was set back in 2013. Probably not going to get there. We'll check in on that potential for some rainfall coming up.
I got to tell you, my air conditioner is having a hard time keeping up <laughs> with these 100 degree temperatures we keep on getting. Can we get a break, please? Oh, I wish we could. Uh, I, you know, I do think we'll get a little bit of a break tomorrow, maybe with some of this rain moving in, but triple digits for hope. Return. Ooh, nice. Yeah, this has been one heck of a summer so far. Uh, for the heat, that's for sure. Triple digits keep mounting. Uh, let's talk about the rain, though. Let's talk about the good news because there are some showers and storms up there. Uh, north Georgetown, North Boston, there's Broken Line, and that is the boundary that is shifting south. It's probably going to slow down a little bit, but we've noticed some development, maybe even just to the west of Round Rock there. So that's encouraging. This is what we're hoping will bring us our rain chances a little bit later this afternoon and this evening. We look at the water vapor to get an idea of the circulations at are occurring in the atmosphere. You can see the spin here. So we've got a low and we've got good northwesterly flow aloft. Uh, so anything that develops up here, we can watch and sometimes it'll make it all the way down into deep south Texas. That happens in this sort of flow. Uh, but these little disturbances roll south. It can also help to push front south. And that's exactly the situation that we're in right now. And you can almost pick up where that front is right there. And see all the cloud cover out ahead of it. And then some of those showers and storms that are developing with our big ridge of high pressure off to the west. Uh, now with this frontal boundary, we could actually see a few stronger storms. There is a marginal risk of severe weather, so it's not a big risk, but uh, some gusty winds uh, could develop during the afternoon hours uh, during peak heating when we see some of these storms sort of flare up. Here's the future cast. And so this is around five o'clock. We've got some storms potentially developing in the hill country, LaGrange over to Kerrville. This shows some activity out to the south and west too. I'm not so convinced of that. Uh, but I do think that uh, one or two storms popping up Fredericksburg to Kerrville is a possibility. Then as we get into tonight, some of that will spread a little bit farther south as this boundary drops south and sort of falls apart. That's probably our best chance here in San Antonio. And then even into the overnight hours and into tomorrow morning, we still could see some activity, especially if some of these storms form into a cluster. And then that's where you could run into some heavy rain. Uh, places could see some of that. I wouldn't be too fixated on exactly where this paints the rain. It could be really anywhere. These computer models have a hard time picking up on this sort of flow, but this gives you the general idea. And then even tomorrow with this boundary sort of fading away, but still there, we could see some more showers and storms tomorrow afternoon. So the forecast I think looks like this 97 by five o'clock, 30% chance of some showers and storms through the late afternoon and evening hours. Outside right now, 87, we're starting to see those clouds clear out. Morning cloud deck was sort of stubborn today. Dew point is at 72, heat index at 93. We've got a westerly breeze at about 6. Already up to 92 in Comfort and Kerrville. Usually our cool spots are our warm spots this afternoon because they've seen more sun. With the clouds, we're still in the 80s here in Bear County. 91 Carrizo Springs, 92 Catula, 94, another warm spot there in Gonzales. And it feels like 103 right now with all that thick humidity out there. Heat index values will once again be above 100, so we can't escape that. Uh, but I do think we'll have that chance of rain tonight into tomorrow, uh, 98 on your Saturday. And even t tomorrow afternoon, as we mentioned, there are a chance for there is a chance for some storms. A 20 percent chance Sunday and Monday, too. We'll have to watch what develops to our north if some of that activity can drop south. Otherwise, the ridge builds back in next week. We're back in the triple digits by Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. August looks a little like July. It does. Those hundreds sitting there. We just keep it going. Thanks. Yep. We're talking to kids about school next. Students are voicing their concerns as they prepare for the upcoming school year. Plus, a pair of Rubik's Cube solving experts form a friendship on their journey to become champions. Sarah Costa tells us some of the content you can stream online this weekend. Please put our health and our safety first. Our health is uh, the most important thing right now. We need to prioritize student and family safety above all else. As a new school year approaches, many are uncertain about what learning will look like. Right now on KSAT TV streaming app, a group of local students weigh in. Do they feel safe returning to the classroom anytime soon? They talk to us about their biggest concerns like the mental health, the digital divide, and of course, coronavirus. The extended interviews are now streaming. 
Also on the app, teachers are weighing in on how they feel about the upcoming school year. It's the subject of episode seven of our newest digital show. You can watch Case That Explains back to school during a pandemic right now. New episodes drop every Thursday. Open up your eyes to find me there. Take in a live jam session without leaving your home. Local artist Nina Diaz is the latest musician to be featured in the KSAT original series, Stay at Home Jams. Check out a couple of her songs. Just download the KSAT TV app, available on Roku, Fire Stick, and most other smart TV devices. Clearly, they're rivals, but they're friends. Ah, uh, look who it is. Hey, Max. What for? Top three, right? Top three, that's all. In the world, Top right? Three. Enter the world of speed cubers and see it through the eyes of two close friends and champions. The unlikely duo face off in this Netflix documentary. This is not loyalty. Please. It's servitude. If you're in the mood for something a little more intense, check out the gritty film Shadow of Violence, released overseas as Calm with Horses. The dark drama follows ex-boxer Douglas Arm Armstrong as he works for a drug dealing family who asks him to kill someone for the first time. The movie depicts Armstrong's struggle as his loyalties are divided. For something family friendly, a new series featuring all your favorite Muppets is streaming right now. It's gonna be wild and funny. And it's gonna feature some new friends, friends like... No details about celebrity guests or content may be proffered at this juncture. Uh, but Joe, look, I, I was just gonna show everyone... Whoa, 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 over my dead legal briefs. <laughs> Check out the first episode of Unscripted Fun on Disney+. Plus. I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. That's pretty funny. Hey, it is a huge birthday weekend. Mm. Mark Austin's birthday, Mike Osterhage's birthday coming up, and... It's Harry Potter's birthday. And look at those two have already started celebrating. That's right. Today yeah. we are celebrating the birthday of one of the most beloved characters from a book or movie, Harry Potter, with a little bit of magic and some tasty treats. Yes, I'm going to teach all of you muggles how to make your own magic wand. And haha. -ha. Yes, and you know the perfect companion to your movie marathon is this Flying Cauldron Butterscotch Cream Soda. Yeah. It's for those of you looking for that butterbeer taste. It's pretty tasty, too. And we've got Magic Wand, our butterbeer. Still needs some tasty treats. You name it, I bake it. Shows you how easy it is to make some magical treats. Look, at they just appear right there on the screen like that. <laughs> These are good, too. Mm. Yes, and the perfect summer treat, watermelon. You share the best ways to enjoy it. And getting fit doesn't have to be all weights and treadmills. Have fun and bust a move with this dance-inspired workout. Go, Fiona. Oh, yeah. Joseph Brooks from Next Level Personal Training shows us some moves. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>